Ghostbus Fisherman Chris, and if you're new here, welcome. Uh, it'd be really awesome if you would like, comment, and subscribe. Help us out. Um, today, we're going to be doing the May Six Sense Six Sack. I'm pretty excited about this. <clears throat> this guy's little teal in here. Alright, let's get this thing open. Oh. Let's see what we got. Uh, let's start with the heart bait. Okay. So this is a Hyperjerk 70. Um, 3 8 7 ounce, 70 millimeters. Okay. These are pretty cool. So, this is Shad Burst. Kind of think of this as like a... Oh, how do I want to describe this? It's, it's like a topwater... It's not really a walking bait. It's more of like a topwater jerk bait. Okay, um, it's, how do I describe this? So basically, you cast this out, here's your water line, floats on top of it. When you pop it, you act, treat it kind of like a walking bait, but it's not a walking bait. It's more like a, it's more like a topwater jerk bait. Um, so when you pop it, or twitch it, it dives a little bit underneath the surface, just a little bit, not a whole bunch. Maybe I want to say like six inches, maybe maybe a foot if you really jerk it. Um, these are actually a really, really, really cool bait. So this one here, that shad burst. So you've got that nice green back. You've got that chrome on the sides there, going to that pearl white there on the belly. Of course, you've got those. Um, black nickel hooks down there. You got a feathered one in the back. This is a really great bait. Um, I really wish I got to fish this more because my window to fish this and majority of the lakes around me because I have a lot of um, undergrowth that grows up and then because majority of my lakes so all of the shallows are pretty they're pretty shallow I'd say like Anything deeper than like 10 feet, it's got growth on top of the water. Anything deeper than 15 feet, it typically doesn't always have growth. A lot of the lakes do still have growth at that depth. So I have a very narrow window where I can fish something like this. And right now, during that pre-spawn spawn, because spawn, I'm still in pre-spawn spawn up here, uh, depending on the lake. Um... This would be like the perfect time to fish this right now. So I'm pretty excited about that. I really like this bait. Let's give it a listen. See, it's not too much, but it's not too little. It's, it's something. Plus a lot of it is just that movement. So I'm pretty excited about this. This is, this is actually really, really, this is pretty cool. I've got a couple of them, but I don't have this color. Grab the next bait here. Let's grab another. Do I have another hard bait in here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have a Crush Crush 50 S, which is a silent square bill. So this guy is three eighths of an ounce. It's 60 millimeters long, and it dives two to four feet, or two to five feet. The color on this one is called Jaint Juice. This is a pretty cool bait. So I have this in the regular Crush 50 but it's not a silent. So it's a round body um, square bill. Nothing super particular about the body, but the color on it, so you've got this nice purple here on the back, and then you've got that super light, oh, it's gonna be so hard to pick up on the camera, I think. So it's got like this ghosted chartreuse down both sides of it. And then the belly is this nice white color, okay? This bait overall is a fantastic color option. I have a lot of luck of, with this well right now and later in the fall. Um, really just square bills in general are pretty sweet but I have I use square bills primarily now and in the fall and throughout the summer. I don't typically fish them in the winter. But yeah the Jane Juice this is a super awesome color. Super sweet color. 
Alright, let's grab that next bait. Oh, oh, what's this? Oh, okay. So it's a Vega Frog. This is a, this is their popping version of a Vega Frog, not the walking one. This color's pretty sweet, actually. Get those legs flipped out there. So, yeah, oh, this is going to be our exclusive color for the month. It's called Mud Frog. Kind of like a leopard print there on the back with some orange stripes on it. That's pretty cool. It's got that wide mouth there. So it's kind of like a, it's a popping frog. Um, and then it's continuing that kind of cheetah print on the belly. Nice legs. This is definitely a frog that I'm going to boil. And I do have a secret little thing that I do to them besides boiling them. If you don't know what that is, um, so when you get like your topwater frogs or m mouses or, or I guess mice, um, typically the bodies of them are, pr are fairly stiff. The easiest way to take care of that stiffness of the body so it's just a little bit easier for the bass to bite it and get hooked up on it is to put them in boiling water for a little while. You'll, you'll feel it. Like it, it sounds kind of stupid and it sounds kind of weird um, till you do it and then you'll just kind of know. Actually, mine's actually got a bent hook. That's kind of weird. Or maybe the body's just sitting on weird. Anyway, the other thing that I like to do with my frogs is I'll take these hooks and I'll bend them out just up just a little bit like that so it's a little more away from the body. Um, I don't know if it actually helps with the hook-up ratio, but it makes me feel better about my hook-up ratio. I, I don't know. Really, to be honest with you, like, it's it, it's a thing that I've always kind of, I've done it for a long time now. I had one frog, and I just could not get bit on it. I just could not get bit on it, and then I bent the hooks up, and then I finally got the hook up on it. So, I might be just kind of delusional, and... But, I mean, that gives me confidence in the bait to do that. So, it's just a thing, you know. If you, if you, if you find you're starting to have kind of issues hooking up on a frog, maybe try bending those hooks up like I do. Could be worth it. Um, I take like a little box end wrench, like a little 8 millimeter or maybe like a quarter inch guy, and I just kind of slip it on the body right there. Get it right in here and then just kind of just bend it up just a little bit don't want to go too far and you don't want to press too hard if it's not really moving because you might break the hook but that's just a little thing that i do but this frog is pretty sweet like i'm definitely going to use this this is a unique color pattern for sure but this belly i really like this belly and the fact that's a popping frog i really i I like popping frogs better. I don't know if they fish better, but they make me fish better. Okay. Um, oh, I know what this is. Oh, no, I don't. Peg X stopper. So, I do know what this is, because I thought, wow, I'm kind of dumb. Huh. Anyway, so this is the Divine Spinner bait hand tied skirt all that cool stuff let's get this thing opened up here i love spinner baits wow that really felt like a spinner but those are just the trailer hooks no they're peg x stoppers i think they're trailer hooks for some reason <laughs> it's been a long day guys <clears throat> okay so this one actually makes me pretty happy Okay, so this guy's a half of an ounce, and it's Shad Ice. So I just got a bunch of spinners, but I didn't get any half ounce guys, because it's not that quite that time of year for me, really. But this is fantastic. So you've got your big silver willow, and then you've got a baby brass willow. So your primary blade and your secondary blade. The finish on these blades is great. 
the quality of the materials are great. Everything's free moving. Nice ball bearing swivel there. Strong wire. Nice strong wire. Moving down to the body. Got a nicely painted head there. Nice little shad pattern. Light blue black or light blue back. Some nice yellow on the side there. Some ridges around where the gill plates would be. And then a nice pearl to this really awesome white skirt. It's got a little bit of flake in it. But that's perfect. The coolest part about these, and one of the things I really like about it, is these baits, they have a screw lock. So, I read cheap for a second. Uh, okay, yeah. So, we're not going to use that. Um, give me just a second, and I will grab a random trailer. go ahead and use the soft bait that's in here it's it's not a really good example but we'll just go ahead and use it so this month we also got a plum fleck med fry nice sweet bait here we're just gonna pop it open real quick for the demonstration here so with this screw lock hook here i can't believe I'm trying to find a trailer um so i'm just gonna go ahead and quick rig this up here This is not the bait for it. Um, it would work, hypothetically, you know, but it's not the ideal bait. So basically, you just turn this guy on here. Just like that. And then the soft plastic literally has nowhere to go. See that? It, it can't pull down, it can't act stupid, whatever. Okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna pull this off here real quick. Get this Ned Fry off of here. It doesn't really belong on here. Um, but yeah, I just wanna show you guys that really cool screw lock. But the Divine Spinner Baits, I really like them. But I also really like Spinner Baits. So, I mean, you can take that with a grain of salt. Whatever. That's, that's super cool. And then we got Peg X Stoppers. These are just, these are like for your regular, like your, your Peg Texas rigs and stuff like that. You put them on your line and they stop your weight from moving. Um, it's really great that I actually got some because I was thinking about buying some so that works out because I think I'm down to like my last One of like one of these bunches. So getting a whole pile of these is pretty sweet 54 of them in here because there's six of these I mean, it's not glamorous, you know, but Terminal really isn't glamorous just we got to be thankful for the terminal that we do get okay and of course let's go back to our net fry so this is a 4.6 inch net fry plum flat color so it's like a nice reddish plum color but then it's got this blue fleck in it which plum fleck you, you get where they're going with the name here um so this is a great net bait. You could even um, use this as a trailer on like a jig 
whatever. I mean, really anywhere that you would fish something stick-shaped. It does have a flat bottom. See if you guys can see that there. It does have a flat bottom. And the sides are all ridges. And the top is too. Just a regular tail. Nothing super fancy. Um, these work great. Um, I like to throw these on shaky heads. And a Texas rig them. They work great. And of course, you know, Ned rigging them. But I will say one thing about these. Compared to um, other 6 cent soft plastics, they're denser. So they don't really... They don't really float like you would expect. It's not like a trick worm. Um, they're denser, so they don't really float. And when I fish these on a shaky head, I kind of treat it like an oversized net anyway. But I like the extra length of that shaky, uh, shaky head hook. Um, I don't have any like really big net heads because I never saw much point in that when I could just use a shaky head and achieve kind of the same presentation. Um, that's a shortcoming for me. Um, but I also don't fish a whole bunch of net rigs. I like the shaky a lot more. So, yeah. That's that. Um, this, that is everything from the sack. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. wait. Ha, I lied to you guys. There's more. So we got trailer hooks. Okay, cool. Actually, yeah. So I'll also rig this up on that spinner bait and show you guys how this works. I, I literally have a little box with trailer hooks in it. And they're pretty sweet. So the six cents ones, these are a three aught. It's just a straight shanked hook. Nothing super fancy here. Um, what does make this fancy is right here over the eye, there's this pl piece of plastic. Okay. So the cool idea with this is, yeah, I'll just put it on. I'll just put it on for you guys. So with this trailer hook, if you're noticing the bass are short striking your spinner, or they're not quite taking it, or you're fishing around bat, like maybe smallmouth or smaller bass that might not be able to take that that much larger hook, throw that trailer hook on them. Let them eat on that. And if you play with it long enough, you can get your trailer hook to rig up perfectly behind inside your um, trailer. Now, using the trailer hook, I do still recommend using a trailer. Um, just mostly put it and feed it onto the trailer hook and then just put it here. You're not going to be able to really use this. You could if you put like a longer trailer on that, maybe like a four and a half or three eight, like Kai Tech, you'd be cool with this trailer hook because it would be high enough and far enough back because that, that trailer hook pretty pretty hard to move um doesn't really want to go anywhere so you don't really have to worry about it doing stupid things it does slightly increase your hanging up on stuff ratio so it might not be the greatest thing in the world for every circumstance but especially those days where the short strike can't or it's a small mouth there you go that's the way to go and when you're done with it you just take it. Oh, this is this is the part that's kind of a pain. But it does just pull off so you can use it again. Just don't hit the same hole in the little plastic end. You can pull this down a little bit. I've done that in the past where you just pull the plastic up and then you just keep using it. Or you can push it around or however you need to so you can keep using this little plastic piece. It's essentially like heat shrink. You could achieve the same thing almost with heat shrink. It's just not going to be quite as tough. But yeah, that's it for this month's stack. That, that actually went pretty quickly. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't mutter on too long about something. Um, I'm pretty happy with everything in here. Um, the silent, I'm definitely going to have to throw. 
the Hyper Jerk. I really like this color combination, and right now is kind of a perfect time. This is a bait that I kind of forgot about since the fall of last year when I was fishing a lot of top waters. So this is actually really good timing, and I got this because I could really use this right now. Um, Ned Fry, this color, this color is versatile, it's wicked, and it's going to be a good color. This Popping Frog, it's a Popping Frog, and it's got a nice colored belly. The back, really the back, I don't really worry about because the fish aren't eating the back of it. They're, they're, they care about this part, like this is the important part, and that looks like food, plus it's a that's a popping frog, so I'm big on that. Spinnerbait, I will never ever be mad that I get a spinnerbait. I, I will especially never be mad if I get a spinnerbait that's a size I don't have or a color I don't have. The trailer hooks, spot on perfect. Pairs up great with that. Now the peg stoppers, it's terminal. It, it, it's boring terminal, okay guys? Like, I'll be honest, like, these are peg stoppers. Everybody makes peg stoppers. But, these are now my peg stoppers. So, it's, it, it's, it's, it's little stuff like this that, um, I'm really glad that they didn't give me, like, new worm hooks. We just got worm hooks. Okay, I'm kind of glad that they didn't give us EWG style hooks. We have some. It'd be really cool if we got some flipping hooks. I'd really like some more of those nice ox flipping hooks. I I enjoy those a lot. Um, not really mad. I'm not mad at all. I'm really happy with the way this box turned out. This thing turned out really sweet. Um, but yeah, for anybody that wants to hate, hate on the pig, because I know this is gonna happen. Somebody in the comments is going to be like, the peg stoppers are stupid. I don't care. I like the peg stoppers, guys. Don't pick on my peg stoppers. This is a useful piece of equipment. And you only run out when you don't know that you're almost out. When was the last time you thought to yourself, oh, I need to go buy pegs? You, you didn't. And if you're thinking right now or typing in your keyboard that, that you do, that you worry about, you don't worry about the peg stoppers. Just stop. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. That's it for the video, guys. Um, temperatures are coming up. Water is great. Weather is really turning out nice here. Um, there's going to be some news happening on the channel here before too long. I'm not really sure how I want to throw it out there, but there's, there's more changes coming due to other problem changes but not really problem it's a whole situation i'll explain it later it'll be coming up um but yeah guys if you like this like comment subscribe i want to hear your complaints i want to hear the good things that you got to say i want to hear it all let's talk about it all right take care guys fish around and fish or <laughs> fish around and find out wow i really can't talk tonight see you later